So the 2023 season four build of iRacing is here. And with this update, we have got two brand new GTP cars, the Acura ARX 06, as well as the Porsche 963. This is getting added on to the previous GTP cars we had, which were the Cadillac V-Series R GTP and the BMW M Hybrid V8. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you everything about all four of of these GTP cars so you can decide which one's right for you and which one you will be maining for season four and going into 2024 for the special events. Last season when the Cadillac came out, I made a video comparing the BOP of the BMW and the Cadillac. However, today I'm not talking about the BOP. Last time they were pretty much dead on. Again, I'm sure they are dead on. It's just differences in my driving style and my tastes in cars, what I can go faster in and what I can go slower in. Um, and it's the same here. I can get all relatively the same times with each car. So there's no real difference inherently between the them. However, they do all drive differently, and that's what we're going to be talking about here today. All four of the cars were tested at Spa Francorchamps during the exact same time of day and weather conditions, and they were all using the default iRacing medium downforce setup. And one final disclaimer, I know that the setup can tweak the certain characteristics of each car, however, they do all have inherent characteristics that you won't necessarily be able to tune out of a car. So here's all the information you need to make the right choice for yourself. Let's get right into it though with the Acura. Let's start off with the new cars, why not? First of all, I'd like to mention the Acura is an absolute dream on fresh tires. I wouldn't be surprised in the future if this car does very very well in qualifying it's the most stable I feel like compared to all of the other GTPs on fresh tires I feel like it warms up pretty quick and it doesn't really fight with you at all it kind of just goes wherever you put it on the track within reason of course but as the stint goes on and the tires wear, it does develop a kind of mid-corner understeer that the BMW does. If you've driven that car, of course, you do know what I'm talking about. This isn't personally my driving style, but I did actually go back and retest this car from my original lap times, which you saw earlier, and I did get down to a 202 dead. So you can go fast with it. Again, not my personal taste, but I know there are a lot of people who do like a slightly more understeery car and I have to admit this thing is very stable you don't really have to be super delicate on the throttle it doesn't really like to snap when you get on the power super often it grips it goes and I know that this will be a very popular choice for a lot of people I think if you're just starting to touch into the realm of these prototypes and maybe you haven't really driven something this quick before, I think the Acura is definitely a great place to start. And it'll definitely be one of the quicker cars on track. Again, none of them are inherently faster, but this is going to be one of those cars where I think the average sim racer could take it a little bit farther than some of the other options in the class. Next up is the Porsche, and at first this car felt absolutely horrible to me. It was unruly and unpredictable. I did have a few little nasty spins, which I'm sure you're seeing on camera right now. However, when I went a little easier on it, when I kind of toned it back, extended the braking zones a little bit, the car really did start to come into its own, and it has a very unique driving style, which I actually do kind of of like it has a little bit of understeer that you can feel it's got that mid corner understeer still however you still can use the throttle to rotate the car and I think overall at speed during the full length of a stint the Porsche might actually be the most stable overall I personally do use the throttle to rotate the car so for me it's something I would definitely have to get used to and would be something I would honestly probably try to tune out of the setup a little bit but but 
if you don't do it as much, if you d prefer a little bit more of an understeery car, but you still do like to be able to use the throttle to kind of kick the car around in the slow speed stuff, the Porsche is a fantastic option. Again, I could see this being an absolute fan favorite. Maybe not as much for the kind of beginner drivers, but I think definitely, you know, the medium to expert rank of drivers, which I consider myself in, I think there are going to be a lot of people who can go really fast with the Porsche. Also, as a funny side note, the Porsche is the only one with a non-Cosworth unique steering wheel in the car. So if that means something to you, you want to be a little unique from the other GTPs, there you go. Now for the two existing cars that we had, the Cadillac we're going to start off with. This is my personal choice. This is the one that my uh, endurance team, AAR, that's the car that we use. And it's the car I have probably, especially most recently, practiced in the most. And I love this car so, so much. To me, it is the most drivable. It's also the car I went quickest with. But I am going to try to suspend a little bit of my bias and, of course, go over how this car drives. So if you've never driven it before, this car is big with rotating on the power. It will step out if you get on the power too soon. However, it is really helpful for kind of kicking the car around through those low speed quarters like the turn one hairpin at Spa really, really helps to get the car rotated. And that is where the Cadillac is super duper fast. Another thing I've noticed is the Cadillac actually feels a little bit less draggy in the draft or the slipstream, whatever you want to call it. When all the cars are on their own, they pretty much do roughly the same speed. And of course, with setup, you can make them go faster or slower in a straight line. However, in the draft again, from my experience, at the six hours of the Glen and also just normal IMSA sessions, I do feel like the Cadillac does go better in the slipstream, can get a few extra miles per hour that at least the BMW cannot. The Cadillac has a really pointy front end. So again, if you like oversteery cars more, you like to rotate the car with the throttle, then this is the way to do it. However, even coming out of the corners though, uh, you do have to be careful, especially if the tires are cold getting on the power. However, as the stint goes on, and especially coming out of the medium speed corners and things like that, and of course, obviously, high speed corners, it has pretty balanced power. It's naturally aspirated, so you won't get kind of that kick that all the other cars have with their turbochargers. It feels very nice. It's very smooth. And personally, I do really like it. The brakes on both the Cadillac and the BMW, which I'll talk about next, uh, they are a bit touchier than the Acura and the Porsche, I've noticed. It, of course, can be managed, and you can tweak brake bias to make it a little better, but just note that the Cadillac definitely has a shorter braking zone than the Acura. Now, finally, we'll talk about the BMW. Honestly, this car has become probably my personal least favorite GTP. Um, the Cadillac kind of replaced it, I noticed, in a lot of IMSA races. So I think this is kind of a universal thing that people have kind of drifted away from the BMW. It has a lot of mid-corner understeer, and you can't really use the throttle to rotate the car. I remember when I first drove this car when it came out, I had to get used to it because it had kind of really driven like no prototype I had ever driven before. Of course, I know that they do have TC, but the car really was kind of unruly and you really couldn't get it to rotate at all. But I know for some people that might be a plus. Its brakes are also touchy again, like I said, uh, not as bad as the Cadillac. I think the Cadillac definitely has the touchiest brakes. However, this car is a bit more prone to locking up, at least with the default iRacing setups than the Porsche or the Acura. However, again, this is just me and my driving style. If you like a little bit more of an understeery car, then I'm sure you can go very, very quick with the BMW and feel very comfortable in it. But it's definitely going to be a car you got to get used to if you've driven some of the other GTPs on offer. So here we go. In conclusion, which ones do I recommend? I'm not going to straight up recommend any of them because everybody has a different preference in driving. I'm just going to kind of label them. This is the best way I've thought of doing it. So the Acura is kind of just the gentle beast, if you will. You can really kind of lay into it. It doesn't really fight with you very much. In reason, it'll pretty much go wherever you want it to go on the track. However, those braking distances I have noticed are a little bit longer and overall the brakes just don't feel as responsive. It's nothing horrendous or anything like that. It's just something to keep note of. 
The Porsche 963 is the middle ground, in my opinion. If you want a planted car throughout pretty much the whole stint, you don't want too snappy of a car. However, you still do like to rotate it with the throttle a little bit, then it's going to be the one for you. Again, it has both those understeer and oversteery characteristics. It can come out at you sometimes. It can be a little bit unruly. However, if you do keep it within the limits, it is a very planted car. The Cadillac is the big American sliding muscle car, if you will. This thing really loves to be rotated with the throttle pedal, and it will catch you out if you get on it too quick. However, it is also at the same time very manageable, and if you like rotating the car with the power, you like to kick it through the corners, then this is definitely going to be the GTP for you. And finally, the BMW is just, you like understeer. You don't really like to have a car that's going to kick out at you constantly. And you just want something that is going to be stable through the corners. However, it's not maybe going to be the fastest through those low and medium speed ones. So yeah, that's my full iRacing GTP comparison, and these are just my opinions from what I picked up on driving each one of these cars. You guys can tell me below which ones you like. Have you been sticking with the Cadillac and the BMW? Are you going to continue to do that? Or are you switching over to the Acura or the Porsche? Let me know. Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, a like and a sub would mean a lot. And I will see you all later today and tomorrow for the other iRacing content that has been added in this Season 4 update. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, guys.